In 2020, eight neighbouring farms came together to protect more than 270 hectares of wetlands and restore the health of the Branch River, one of the key tributaries of the Karua River. Funding and support for this project was provided by Hunter Local Land Services through the Marine Estate Management Strategy, Landcare Australia, Mid Coast Council, as well as the farmers themselves. This is the Karua River. It starts up in the Barrington Tops in the Gondwana World Heritage Area and it flows down to Port Stephens. It's a river we all love. We love swimming in it, we love fishing in it, we go boating, we grow oysters. We really need to keep this river clean. Agriculture is just one of many pressures on the river. A lot of the catchment is farmed, so we really need to work with the farmers to help improve water quality. This project, the Karua Catchment Management Grants Project, is a great example of what we can do if we all work together. If a group of stakeholders all combine our resources, we can create bigger projects and solve bigger problems than we can do individually. All of these projects are on the Branch River. Research has shown us that the Branch River is a hotspot for pollution flowing into the Karua. So it's great to see the farmers working together here to tackle nutrients and sediment. It is absolutely marvellous to see eight landholders Landcare Australia, Mid Coast Council and Hunt Hunter Local Land Services coming together to preserve the environment. By working together, this program's benefits extend well beyond the farm gate, linking habitat for wildlife right through the catchment. This exciting program builds on the successes of the Durness Borland Landcare Project, which linked the Mile Lakes to the Barrington Tops World Heritage Area. There's a big issue here in the Karua River. The Karua River is the culmination of everything that happens on the land, finds its way into the river. The Karua River and the Branch River are notoriously the most polluted areas. These eight farmers have about 20 kilometres of river frontage and riparian dropping into the river. And we're trying to um, fence off these areas, keep the cattle out of them, and fence off the dams so that we can keep those areas clean and re reduce the pollution going into the rivers. This project has worked at uh, minimising erosion, sediments running into waterways and also nutrients, uh, not just in chemicals and fertilisers but also animal effluent uh, back into our waterways. We've been very fortunate here in this area on the branch that uh, we were able to meet up with a land care group and um, after a presentation, we ended up with eight landholders prepared to sign up and, and do a project in this very area. So under the project, we have actually been able to fence out 270 hectares of uh, wetland, um, which is just a fantastic result um, and it's a credit to the landholders. They've stuck in it together. The landholder also does a lot of the work um, and they also put in money themselves. But the biggest issue for them is that they are donating essentially this land to the environment. So Brian on this farm has fenced off 60 hectares. So that's nearly, you know, that's over 150 acres of land that he's fenced off on his own property here. Wetlands are extremely important to our environment, to our water quality, um, and uh, this is why the MEMS project has delighted to be able to secure 270 hectares of wetland in this region. We're trying to stop the cattle from coming into this area and we're fencing it off and uh, which will help the water quality down the river. Now you can see the cattle are bogging up the uh, wetlands so we uh, will only be using this uh, pasture for uh, once a year maybe and uh, for stock use when it's dry. We want to keep the cattle off this area so that the uh, uh, wetlands will regenerate itself and um, it'll give better water quality down the river and uh, that's the main reason for doing this. I'm using this sort of fencing uh, to keep my cattle from the uh, wetlands. Calves and uh, other smaller animals can't get through. I'm allowing it to be off the ground because of the uh, salt on the uh, wetlands and also having it up like that, smaller kangaroos and stuff like that can get underneath. Uh, it's great to see that every farmer has a choice of the type of fencing he wants to put on his property. This dam is a natural dam built in the clay and rock and you can see it's uh, stacked with reeds 
The reeds and the, and the plants in this dam uh, act to purify the water. Under this project, these dams will be all fenced with electric fences to exclude the cattle, so the cattle can't get in and trample the reeds. And this makes the whole system function a lot better. The farmer gets a good return out of this project. There's something in it for him, and there's something in it for the wider public as well. The wider public gets the environmental benefits, the protection of the wetlands, reducing nutrients from the cattle going into the waterways. The farmer gets uh, support to manage his property, more infrastructure going in to manage his cattle, to help him look after his own property. So there's something in it for everyone. A good chance to use these projects to show others in the catchment what can be done, what they can take out of it, and adapt on their own properties to protect the river and protect the wider catchment.